understand, John. <laughs> no. There's something gone in my leg. I can feel blood running into the boot. There's a bone broken in the ankle. There's not much bleeding. There's a way up the cliff here, John. If you're prepared, I carry you some of the way. But when it gets too steep, you must crawl. Let's get to it. Better to die here than to wait for them to carry us off to jail. Leave me here. They might have mercy on a boy. Too late to turn back now. We have 15 minutes yet to win or lose with. And if we can gain the cliff top in that time, we shall have an hour start. Don't look down. We can thy pace, lad, if thou canst. Time is short. Found Vasco's body. Another minute, and they will see us. A brave lad. Once again, round this turn, I can pick me up. That leg of yours will keep us tied up for weeks. We must find a place to hide. I know of just such a place in Purbeck. It's called 
Joseph's pit. But it will take all day to get there. Just rest here till the air is cooler, John. Be watchman. If you see aught moving, wake me. Just but a boy scaring rooks with an old firelock. We will not stir unless he makes his way. He's making straight for the wall. We must show ourselves and hide your leg. What are you doing here, son? Scaring rooks for Farmer Top. Ah. Have you a charge of powder to spare? I want to get a rabbit in the gorse for supper and have dropped my flask. Or maybe you've seen it. No. Seen no flask. And as for powder, I have little left. Need that for the rooks. Oh, come now. Give me a charge or two. And there's a shilling for thee. Give flask and all, and you shall have a crown. What shot have you? Have you dropped your shot flask too? No. But my shot is over small. I have a dozen goose slugs. But you must pay a shilling for them too. I shall get a beating, and to be beat is worth a shilling. Well, if thou art beat, then be beat for something more. Give me that old firelock that thou carriest. And take a guinea. I know I shall get a beating. Somehow I think not. You're a bright child. No doubt about it. I don't trust him, Elsevier. He saw the blood on my leg. We shall be long gone before he can tell his tale. Here. There's but a little distance to go now. I must have slept three hours or more without a sorry watchman, John. The posse might have had us like daylight owls. You and cry. Out of the posse. Out of the king's crown itself.
John. Surely we've come far enough. Can you feel a breeze on your face? Yes. Yes, I can. Nearly there. You must lie here for a month or two, lad. It doesn't mean bad, but I've no worse. And we'll get straw tomorrow if I can, to better it. They told me my father was... Has had the judgment of the Almighty brought down on his head. I'm sorry for you, child, but I will not stay under the same roof as that evil corpse. Not one penny piece in wages did he pay me for keeping house. I will not remain in this house a second longer. Who killed my father? Elzevir Block, Mistress Grace. We're searching for him now and the boy who is with him. Three score years and ten. The 
days of our age are three score years and... Who's there? Answer, or I fire. Frost for the Bonaventure. Sexton Ratsy. Ah, John. What a night to come calling on friends. Sexton Ratsy. It's good to see a friend again. Good to see you. Safe and well, young John. At first I thought you were the revenue. They do not stir on nights like this. That's why I knew it would be safe for me to come. All I could manage. For us, this is a feast. So how's life in hiding, young John? It is as you see it. Aye. But better than Dorchester Jail. Where's Elsevier? He's gone to pool to arrange passage for us to St. Marlowe. St. Marlowe? Shall you leave England with him then? Why? God save us. What a night. God save all souls at sea. The Dutchy men came and boarded up the Why Not. What'll happen to it? None can tell. Ask you never paid a penny's rent for the place and died before it took possession. It stands empty and shuttered. But I tell you, I feel sorriest for Maskew's girl. What of her? She grows thin and pale. Not a man in Moonfleet would help me with her father's funeral. The crowd turned up, not from respect. had to walk through a mob that was determined to show how much they hated her father. Send him to hell, Reverend. We'll dig him up and burn him. No bless him! No bless him! No bless him! Seemed they would cause a riot till Tom Redruth stepped up. Ratsy's right! It was Maskew we hated, not this young girl. Leave her to mourn in peace. His soul will be judged by one higher than us. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. When it was all over and the coffin, Lord, up she walks to Tom Redruth and says, I thank you, sir, for your kindness. And then she walked away by herself and no one moved till she'd left the churchyard gate, letting her pass like a queen. She is a queen, fairer than any queen. I have a soft spot for the child. And I think she has the same for thee. Has she said so? When they took the hue and cry papers for her to sign, she refused, saying that Elzevir Block had never raised a finger to her father when they met in Moonfleet, and that she did not believe that he was the man to kill his enemy in cold blood. But it was not just for Elzevir's sake she wouldn't sign. She would not be the cause of any harm that might befall thee if the Revenue had a shoot on sight warrant signed by her. I wish she knew what really happened that night. Everyone thought that Elzevir had killed him. 
till a tale got about that he'd been hit by a stray shot fired by the posse from the cliff above. Aye, that's what happened. But who'd believe it? Grace Mask, you might. If you told her. I should dearly like to see her again before we leave for France. Well, mayhap she would be a match for thee. If you were man or woman and not boy and girl. And if she'd have you. Ah. Oh. Have another pull on the flask, John. The night bites cold. How's this? Scripture verses. To set there a spell against evil spirits. The days of our age. Three score and ten. He, he writes that this is Psalm 90, verse 21. Anyone one will tell you there are not 20 verses in it all told. This is the 10th verse, not the 21st. This against evil spirits wouldn't give a flea from a black cat. All the verses are numbered wrong. I wish I had a book of common prayer and I'd prove my words. So you'll go with Elsevier? Aye, until the pursuit against us has ceased. It was a sorry business and has broke up the finest gang that ever ran a cargo. Besides driving the young Elzevir to hiding caves and dens of the earth. He should have come with us that morn and not stayed behind. Nay, Master Ratsy. When Master Block stays, I stay too. When he goes, I follow. He took me in when I had no one. It'd be wrong for me to abandon him now all hands are turned against him. Would you think it's right? No. I think these days of seeing thee grow from boy to man, John. Uh, I think the carefree days of youth are behind me now. I must leave you. I would fain wait till Elsevier returns and fainer till this gale is spent. But I must be out of Purbeck before sunrise. I hope we shall meet again. Goodbye, Sexton Ratsy. My heart is heavy, John, to think how all the good old times are gone. Go well, lad. Four feet deep. That's it! Blackbeard's treasure! Four score feet deep well north! Elsevier! We're to be rich! Four score feet deep well north! North of what? Morning, watchman. Elsevier, I'm sorry. I was shouting out password till my lungs burst. I was awake till very late. Well, you'll not have to keep guard for much longer. In eight days, we sail on the Bonaventure to San Marlo. We shall be at the Eperon door with old Chauvelet, and you will learn to patter French until these evil times have blown over. Elsevier, I have great news. We are but that much from being made men. Eh? 
The paper from Blackbeard's locket contains a code. The second number doesn't stand for the verse. It stands for the number of the word chosen from each verse to make a secret meaning. Four score feet deep well north. It can only point to one thing, his treasure. Blackbeard's diamond. What else? This does not point so clear as you think. Four score feet. From what? Deep well north. <laughs> north of where? Hmm? That's what I lay awake half the night trying to make sense of. I think you may have found the code that you hope to find. But search long enough and you will arrange the words in an order that proves that the world is square and the sea is made of milk. I'm sure it means something. We know for certain that he stole the diamond from the king when he was governor of Carisbrook Castle. It is rumored that he stole the diamond. Carisbrook Castle. It has a well that goes 50 fathoms deep. Four score feet deep well north. That's where he hid the diamond. In the well at Carisbrook Castle. We're very sorry about the problems with the sound on Moonfleet. That's terrible, wasn't it? We're awfully sorry about that. I do hope it didn't spoil it too much, but it will be back next week, and it will all be together, sound and pictures. Sarah, sorry about that. Now, we're back tomorrow on Children's BBC with Gran, Lay on Five, there's Laurel and Hardy, Treasure in Malta, Dungeons and Dragons, also Newsround and Blue Peter with the result of the Bosses competition. Great, great, that. So I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. And now on BBC One, Emlyn Hughes joins Bob Wilson for another World Cup report. Mm -hmm.